praise God, amen, mm -hmm. for another Sunday. Let me say greetings to you all in Jesus' name. Greetings. Good to be here. We are going to continue on um, our topic on the authority of the name of Jesus. And uh, this, is, this is going to be the conclusion point part of this particular session. <coughs> okay. Uh, the authority of the name of Jesus. I'm going to recap on a couple of slides, but we're going to start from Matthew 28. <coughs> verses 18 to 20. Remember that we are on our faith walk, we're on our faith journey, and we're looking to looking at things that will help us to uh, to operate in faith. Amen? Amen. And uh, we spoke about fellowship with the Father, and then we started to talk about the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to continue with that. Matthew uh, 28, 18 to 20 <coughs> tells us, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Quite a powerful passage of scripture. And here... When we look at this passage, God is trying to bring a truth into our spirit, and that truth is the name of Jesus. Yeah, there Amen. is absolute authority in that name, which enables us to be steadfast and immovable, and also enables us to always abound in the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That name, that name that is above every name. And what is that name? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a wonderful name. It's a powerful name. Amen. Amen. So now I'm going to share the same scripture. This is now <coughs> taken from the original language. So I've just broken it down from the original language and paraphrased it. I'm just going to read it from here. And it says, And Jesus drew near and spoke to them, saying, All authority is given to me in the dwelling place of God and in the dwelling place of man. Go travel therefore into all nations and make disciples of them, fully saturating them in the authority of the Father, in the authority of the Son, and in the authority of the Holy Spirit. Fully saturating them. Amen. Can you imagine being just saturated with God? Thank you. The very presence of God is very rich indeed. And especially when you get into the heart of prayer and you get into the heart of worship, you will get that saturation. From above and that's why we spend time in the word and that's why we spend time in prayer amen mm -hmm. he says instructing them to guard from loss or injury or to prevent from escaping everything that i have commanded you and behold i exist now and will be with you always even until the end of the world in other words when we get saturated with the presence of god with christ in us Okay, the idea is, is that uh, he, he stays with us to prevent anything that he has given to us from escaping. Mm -hmm. Amen. That it stays with us. And that's why he says he is with us until the end of the earth. So when we said yes to Jesus, we made a very good choice. It was the best decision that we made in our lives. And here it's teaching us that because he is in us, he can prevent anything, anything about him, all his word anything about him from from escaping from you the only way that we lose sight of who god is is because we lose sight of god you understand we lose sight when we say we, we when we make decisions outside of his will when we complain when we murmur you understand when we do all things that are not pleasing to him we lose sight of him but if we stay with it we stay saturated in his presence it makes a big difference in how we how we live our lives mm. and how we do with and make, and make certain decisions. Amen. So very very important. So Jesus has authorized you and I to make disciples, and not only to make disciples, but to make sure that they never lose sight of God's word, never lose sight of God's word or the authority of the name of Jesus. Mm. <coughs> So God does not want us to lose sight of his word. Mm. Amen. And he does not want us to lose sight of the authority of the name of Jesus. Mm. That's why the Bible teaches us that we have to fix our eyes 
on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of oh, our faith. faith. Amen. Amen. So, so, so important. So what we try to do is to get you to have that relationship with God. Spend the, you can talk to God anywhere in, in, your, in your place. I will wander around. Even when I'm hoovering, I'm talking to God. When I'm washing up, I'm talking to God. When I'm walking down the road, I'm talking to God. I'm asking questions. I'm praising him. I'm giving him honor. I'm giving him all the glory that he deserves. But I, it, you don't have to wait for a specific mm. time mm. to do that. You know, some people can be quite regimented and say, I've got this, this. It doesn't have to be that way. Everywhere you are, you can just say, praise the Lord. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you understand? Even when you go into, into your workplace, isn't it? You just say, well, praise the Lord. Sometimes I'm in my car and I say, Lord, I thank you for my car. Because God blessed us with the car. Yes, he did. So I thank God for it. Praise his holy name. You know, we went out, Maureen treated me to, my, to the concert on Wednesday for my birthday. I said, well, Lord, thank you that we were able to come and have some time out and just enjoy our evening. And it was a wonderful evening that we spent. Yeah. And I, yesterday was the same for my, for my sixth year. I said, well, God, thank you for all the people that are around me. Because all the people that were there are people that are very dear to me. You understand? So for me, I have to give God praise. Amen. So in everything, you know, you can praise God everywhere. Praise the Lord, yeah? When you when you know that you, you were better than yesterday, you say, well, Lord, I thank you Amen. that I'm better than I was yesterday. That's right. And rejoice because tomorrow is another day. Mm. Amen. Amen. So the name of Jesus is very rich indeed. And Jesus said, and lo, I am with you always, always. Always, always, because we said yes to him. So then we went on to speak about how is he with us. Okay, and we're going to flow into that now. How is he with us? Well, we looked at Matthew 18, 19 and 20. And it says, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Now, if you can imagine, you know, can two walk together except they agree? But if you can imagine that you're focused on the Lord together, you're lifting up the name together. Jesus says, I am in the midst. That's how he is with us. Amen. That's why we spend time in prayer. That's why we spend time in the word. That's why we spend time in praise. That's why we spend time in worship amen because here he says lo i am with you always even unto the end of the earth praise the name of the lord so jesus is not really talking here about a church service as we were sharing he's talking about those two who are agreeing that the name of jesus has absolute authority those people who agree that the name is above every name those people that agree that the name of Jesus will bring about a change. Amen. That's who Jesus is talking to. He's saying, when you do that, he says, I will be in the midst of you. So first, we've got to believe, haven't we? Mm. We have to believe that the name of Jesus is all powerful, it's almighty. It says, you know, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, we come to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Unto, to, unto, to, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, do I believe that? And the answer is, you know, as a born again Christian, your answer should be yes. So if you believe it, then you need to say it, and you will receive the reality and the authority of that name. He is, that, that, that is why he is saying, and every time you say that name, it is going to work. It is going to work. It does exactly what it says on the tin, amen? amen. That's the authority that we have. So here now, we then paraphrase, from the original language, the same scripture verse in Matthew 18, 19 and 20. And it says this, Furthermore, I say to you, that provided two of you are in one accord, all harmonious, here on earth as touching anything they ask, my Father who is in heaven will cause it to be. Praise who causes it to be? My Father in heaven. My Father in heaven will cause it to be because you use the authority of the name of Jesus. You notice when we pray, we say in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Always important. Sign it off. That's his signature. Amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so when we're praying, we pray in the name of 
Jesus. Glory be to God. And it says as we touch anything, as we are harmonious, as we are in one accord. Remember when the, when the, the, the apostles were in one accord, in one place? What happened to them? The Holy Spirit came upon them. Amen? Because they were in one accord. They were in harmony. They were in one accord, in one place. And Jesus came in the midst of them. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful thing. So we need to be in one accord in one place. And it says, for where two or three assemble together in the authority of my name, there will I exist in the middle of them. Now imagine having Christ at the very core of your being. Mm. Amen. Amen. Had those moments where you get that presence. It feels wonderful. It gives strength. So you spend time in the Word. Mm -hmm. That's why we encourage you to pray. That's why we encourage you to believe. That's why we encourage you to trust. And to trust in His Word. That when you pray, God will answer. But we cannot pray amiss. We have to make sure we believe that the name of Jesus will work for us. Amen. Amen. We have to. And we give God praise for the name Amen. of Jesus, Amen. the authority that we have. So Jesus is clearly saying that he is right there to see to it that what those two or three agreed upon comes to pass. Amen. Amen. That's the name of Jesus. So I love to use that name. Amen. Amen. So when we go back to read Matthew 28 and verse 20, where Jesus said, Lo, lo I am with you till the ends of the earth. How is he with us? When he said, where two or three assembled together in the authority of his name, he will exist in the middle of them. That's yeah. how he is with us. Spending time in his presence, spending time in his word, spending time in prayer, spending time in worship, spending time in all that he is. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the secret. He is with us in his power and in the authority of his name. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Jesus. We sing a song, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's just the same as his holy name. Amen. So we serve a big God. So no matter where we are, no matter what, what we do, we give thanks to God for who he is in our lives. So when you're at school, thank God. Praise Jesus. Ask him for strength. Thank him for strength. Thank him for a strong mind so that you can remember what you need to remember. Just use that name of Jesus. When you're in your workplace, you do exactly the same. Thank God. If there's any issues that come up, Lord, I need help with this. You know, I come in the name of Jesus because there is authority in that name. Amen. And God begins to pour wisdom and strength and everything else that we need to do what we need to do. So the name of Jesus is extraordinary. Amen. Extraordinary. So when Jesus gave us a legal right to use his name, God the Father knew all that that name would imply when used in prayer. You see, God wouldn't say to use that name or give us his son if, if he was, was going to say, well, maybe I'm going to answer that. Maybe no, I won't answer that. No, God doesn't work that way. When we believe that name, God causes it to be. Amen? He causes it to be. But first we have to believe. Believing is so, so important. You know, the only reason I call upon the name of Jesus is because I believe that he will do what he says he will do. Amen? Isn't that true? Amen. Otherwise, why do we call upon him? Why Amen. would we call upon him? If we don't believe that he will do what he says he will do. That's right. But I certainly believe he says that he will do what he says he will do. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are times it's right near the knuckle. And yes, there are times when you're kind of praying and it's, it, there's still this thing going on in front of you. But you know what? We have to look beyond the natural. Yes. Keep on praying for what we don't see, because what we don't see will come to pass. Yes. That's why we have faith. That's why we believe. That's why we have confidence in his word. Use that name everywhere you go. Great. And don't let anybody shut you up from using it. Mm -hmm. Amen. That name is powerful. That name is almighty. Amen. And God would not give us it if it would not work. He wouldn't give us his word if his word wouldn't work. He said his word is not going to return to him void. Did he not say that? Amen. So let's use the name 
the authority that God has given us. The possibilities that are enveloped in that name are way beyond our natural understanding. And when he says to the church, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he has given you and I a signed check on the assets of heaven and asking us to fill it in. Amen. That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Christians are where they are in life because they have their own checkbook, so to speak, to arrive there. Now, I want you to think about this, and I'm going to share something here. Many have written small checks mm. because they have had a small vision of Jesus and of that name. I'm not writing no small check. Mm. My dad is rich. I'm not writing no small check. That doesn't make you humble. You understand me? I'm writing it 20 million. Give me a billion. I'm writing a check mm. because that's how big God is. You understand? So he's given us this legal right to use that name. So we can use it in every situation. We don't have to limit God in any way. But some of the things that we get taught moves us further away from him than closer to him. But we want you to get close to him. We want you to have that relationship. Because I'm telling you, when your lives change, that changes everything. Amen. So use that name. You and I have been given a checkbook from heaven. Writing out small checks does not make you humble. No. The lower the check, the lower the power. No. The higher the check, the higher the power. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for me, no man, I'm not greedy. I'm just asking for what I want. Mm. Mm. We all have needs. God is faithful. God is a righteous judge. You understand? He knows the difference between greed and you saying, well, you know what? I, I know this is God's power. I know that God can do this. Amen. Because all things are possible with him. Yes. And all things are possible to those who believe. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So therefore, let us talk about Jesus. Let us talk about the name of Jesus. Do not look to the greatness of your problem. Look to the greatness of your God. Amen. Because God is great. Yes. Your problem is a fleeting thing. What it is, is a distraction. You understand? Because the enemy doesn't want you and I to get to where God wants us to be. Amen? He doesn't want us to get there. So, let's talk about him. Let's keep lifting up that name. Yeah? Even when there's moments when you're, you, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling unwell. Just the name of Jesus does something. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, God. It yes. stirs you up on the inside. So sometimes even we don't know what to pray, we just say Jesus, mm. hallelujah, because you're, you're welcoming him in his presence, you're welcoming him the authority, that is your legal right as a child of God, as a blood washed born again believer. The name of Jesus is very, very important to us. It is the more excellent name, it's the most excellent name that you can call upon, amen. Isn't that true? Yes. It's the most most called an amen so it's a more excellent name one writer points out that men obtain great names in three ways some men are born to be a great name a king for instance others make their name great by their achievements yeah. still others have a great name conferred or given to them or put upon them but the more excellent name came by all three means the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is great because he inherited a great name. Amen. His name is great because he inherited a great name. His name is great because of his achievements on the earth. He did what the Father asked him to do. He didn't do anything outside the Father's will. So in your relationship with God, it's important for you not to do anything outside of the Father's will. And where is his will? His will is in his word. The Word teaches us how to live. The Word teaches us how to pray. The Word teaches us how to honour God. The Word teaches us how to trust in God. The Word teaches us how to have faith in God. Amen. So His will is in His Word. This is very, very important. And I want us to make sure of that. And His name is great because that name was conferred upon Him. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. That's the God that we serve. So I want us to be encouraged by that. Amen. And then we have Hebrews 1. <coughs> this is the more excellent name. Hebrews 1. 
1 to 6 we're going to be reading. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself cursed our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than them. Hallelujah. A more excellent name. Hallelujah. A more excellent name. Okay. So the name of Jesus is the more excellent name. It is a name above every name. Amen. Amen. A name above every name. Isn't that wonderful? wonderful. It's powerful. Okay. It says, for unto which of the angels said here any time, thou art my son. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Come on. For unto which of the angels said here any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship, worship him. him. That is the more excellent name. Amen? The powerful name. The name of Jesus. So whatever we do, whenever we're praying, whatever we're reading, let us use that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And don't let anybody stop you from using that name. Mm. Because using that name gives you authority. It gives you a right over the devil and his cohorts. It gives you a right over every situation. It gives you right over every circumstance. It gives you right over every area of your life. The name of Jesus, which is the more excellent name. name. The more excellent name. And the more we say it, the more it brings joy into our hearts. Amen. Amen. The more it soothes. The more it does something on the inside of us. And the more it helps us to speak in a proper heavenly language. Amen. That we can communicate with our Father in heaven. Amen. And Jesus himself spent time with the Father. Every moment he had, every opportunity he had, what did he do? He spent time with God. Yes in prayer hallelujah isn't that wonderful hallelujah. we serve a big god so jesus inherited a more excellent name than they he inherited a greater name than any angelic being mm. the name of jesus that's why the name of jesus is a wonderful name mm. every time we say it we can rejoice amen every time we say it, we know that he is with us and as a son he is the heir of all things he is the express image of god that's Jesus. He is the brightness or the outshining of the Father. He is God speaking to us. Or as the scripture declares, Emmanuel, God with us. Isn't that wonderful? God with us. So the Son does nothing of himself, but only what he sees the Father do. Amen. That's God with us. God could love us so much that he just he, he wants to pour into us. God loves us so much that he wants us to use the authority of the name of his begotten son. God cares about us so much that he gives us the right and the authority to be more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Come on, that name of Jesus is wonderful. The name that is above every name, the name that we're going to be celebrating, hallelujah, throughout the, the December. That name that is above every name. Praise God. I, look, I love this time of the year. I love people's faces when I'm walking the street and everybody's smiling and talking with them, you know. And those of us that know the reality of the season that we're celebrating, amen, to God be the glory. glory God. I'm telling you, God is a good God yes, he is. to give us his son. So when did he inherit it? When did Jesus inherit it, that name? Well, he did not inherit it. He didn't inherit anything in heaven before he came to earth because he already had everything. So he didn't inherit it then. He did not inherit it when he came to earth because the book of Philippians tells us, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind uh, uh, be in you which was in Christ Jesus. This is what he's saying. Let this same purpose and attitude of mind be in, in, uh, not, you know, be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let it be your example in humility. 
who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but he stripped himself, the Bible says, of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant or a slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. He already had greatness in heaven, but he let go of that greatness to come to earth as a man. Why would he come to earth as a man? To show us that it was possible as a human being to live the way that God wants us to. Yes. That's why he came as a man. That's why he had to come through the woman. And we thank God for all of you ladies. Praise God. But he had to, well, he had to bring his son through a woman so that he could have a natural birth. He felt what we felt. He hurt like we hurt. But he showed us that it was possible just by applying yourself to the Father, to God in heaven, just applying yourself to his word, <coughs> that you could be more than a conqueror. Amen? Amen? That's why we have that name. The name that is above every name. So Christ Jesus, for our sake, stripped himself of his divine abilities as creator. Because in the beginning the Bible says, let, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man. Amen. So he stripped himself of his divine abilities as creator. He stripped himself of his divine ability to be all-knowing. He stripped himself of his divine ability to be all-powerful. He stripped himself of his divine ability to be everywhere present. And he voluntarily and unselfishly laid aside his divine attributes. He did not cease being God, but he emptied himself of all his glory. Just so that he could show us how possible it was to live a life that is pleasing to God here on the earth. Amen. And he had to come as a man to do that. And he did that just for me. He did that just for you. How can we not praise him? How can we not use that name, that, that name that's all authority, amen? So in everything, just say the name of Jesus. Every prayer, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Every thought, every decision, everything. God is a good God, amen. And we love him, amen. And so he inherited this name, this wonderful name. Hebrews 1 verses 4 and 5 says this. Being made so much better than the angels, as he, as he have by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he, as we read earlier, any time thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be, a be to him a father and he to me a son. That name is the most excellent name. Hallelujah. Amen. There's no other name that is greater than that name. Amen. Much as I like my name, it's not, it's not as great as Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we do have some interesting names in this earth, don't we? <laughs> so, <laughs> but we praise God for the name of Jesus. Jesus. What a wonderful Savior. Amen. What a wonderful Lord. Yes. What a wonderful God. Yes. And all of us are here because of him. Yes. And the season teaches us we are here because of him. That wonderful name of Jesus. These verses tell us when he inherited this more excellent name. It was when God said to him, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. That's when he obtained it. This day, that's when it happened. The day he was begotten. It's a wonderful name. So we give God praise for that name. Even when he was being baptized, and he came out of the water, and the Bible says that the heavens opened, and it was like a dove was flying over him. And God said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. One scripture says, hear ye. And God could say that, as I've shared with you before, because he saw himself in his son. There was that reflection. There was like a proud father looking down on his child. Amen. He saw himself in his son. And that's exactly what God wants to do with us. He wants to see himself in us. And how can he see himself in us? When we use that name that is above every name. 
the name of Jesus. Bless you. The name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when when God looks down at us, He's got that reflection. Amen. Because the name of Jesus exists in us. Our born again experiences have, have enabled us to have that name that is above every name mm -hmm. inside of us. And when we look up to heaven, God is looking at a reflection of Himself. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. The name of Jesus. We give God praise for that. Hebrews 10 and verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. The name that is above every name. In the beginning was the word, and the word was, with God. and the word was God. God. And then John 1.14 goes on to say, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. truth. Hallelujah. So in the beginning, God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Hallelujah. And the Word became flesh. So He had to become flesh to dwell among us. He had to come into a body to dwell among us. So that name is all-powerful. That name is almighty. That name is everywhere present. And there are many people who are, who are afraid of it. They're afraid of that name. But that is our tool of authority. When a policeman walks, he has a baton or a gun. And he has a legal right to use it mm. if his life is threatened in any way. We have the name of Jesus. And we have a legal right to use it when our lives are threatened. When the challenges come. When certain things come our way. Instead of focusing on the greatness of the problem, we focus on the name of Jesus, the problem solver. Amen? That's the right that we have. That's the right that God has given to us. The book of Acts 13, 33 tells us, God hath fulfilled the same unto us as, as their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Praise the name of the Lord. So we give God praise, amen, amen, that the name of Jesus is above every name. Mm. Philippians 2, 9, and a few verses beyond that. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We urge you, we encourage you. We always, we know we like to, we, we, our, our, our mission is to build you, that you are so strong that when you use that name, the enemy has to crumble from your life. Amen. The enemy has to be crushed from your life. Praise God. So we want to see that happening in your life. That's why we, we speak about the authority and about faith and about believing because each of us need to have those things in our lives as, as people of God. Amen? Amen? Very, very important. So we give God praise. So we must understand that, that there was a name known in heaven and unknown anywhere else. And that name was kept so that it could be given to someone who should inherit it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? And Jesus, as we know him, the eternal son, as he is known in the bosom of the Father, was given this name. And we notice that at this name, every knee shall bow in the three worlds, heaven, earth, and hell. Ooh. Every knee should bow. Amen. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And God himself has made this investment for the benefit of you and I and for the benefit of the church. Amen. 
He has given us sufficient authority to draw from him to meet our need. Amen. And this is very important for us to remember. The name of Jesus. Always remember that name. In your sleep, in your daily routines, in your walk, always remember the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to stop there. We give God praise and we honor the Lord today for his word. The name of Jesus. It is rich. It is powerful. It is mighty. Remember to use it in your daily lives. Amen. So God richly bless you all. I pray that the teaching's been a blessing to you. And, um, you know, just keep in mind that um, all of these, I've put some messages up on our Word Church Ministry site, our YouTube page. We have a Word Church YouTube page so if you find it subscribe to it so the messages are now going up um, as quick as I can get them up so we've got three on there at the moment go back over them and listen to them again because they really will, will help and develop each one of us amen all right bless the name of the Lord glory be to God praise the Lord amen praise God and uh, let me say greetings to everybody amen.